It's week number three of Cowboy Special Edition brought to you by AT&T. Bill Jones along with Nate Newton, Bucky Brooks, and Isaiah stand back as it is week three of the Cowboys being back at the Star in Frisco. And guys, you know what this week means. It means training camp is officially starting. Yeah, they're doing conditioning and all that sort of stuff here. They're cramming their offseason into this first couple of weeks, phase one of training camp. But the official start of training camp, as Mike McCarthy told us, or told the team back last uh, Sunday, is on Thursday the 13th. So let's kick it off with this, go around the horn. Nate, what are you look, most looking forward to as camp kicks off? Bill, if I can sneak in there and get a peek at this thing, I would like to see how they're going to run camp, how they're going to divide up the reps between the veterans and the young guys, to see how they can get this thing going because they drafted some guys up high, and I know they want them to play, but I want to see how they're going to split these reps up between these guys. You know, Nate, it's funny. You talk about wanting to see how they split the reps up. I want to see how Mike McCarthy puts together this team because he hasn't been around them all offseason. How can he get them to practice and perform up to the standard that he envisions his team eventually being able to reach? Yeah, fellas, and I'm just simply excited to see these guys get on the field and get after it. I know these young guys are hungry. I know these veterans are ready to get to it. It's time to get on the field. Let's play some ball, fellas. Yeah, it's, it's such an unusual uh, training camp, of course, with no preseason games this year. Uh, the uh, deadline for opting out came and went this past week. Some news from the past week is the veteran fullback, Jamei Zolawali, uh, decides to opt out due to uh, COVID-19. Cowboys also cut uh, one of the place kickers on their roster, Kai Forbath, who, of course, joined the team late in the year uh, last season. But let's remember, they signed the veteran Greg Zerline, the former Los Angeles Ram in the uh, offseason and when you talk about special teams they also brought in John Fossil the former special teams coordinator with the Rams a veteran special teams coordinator and uh, with Zerline as the place kicker how big is it for this team to shore up the special teams let's start with you Nate and go around the horn you know, I, I like the fact that they, they brought in Coach Foster. I thought that was the number one and best move they made. Even over the C.D. Lamb pick, I thought that was the best move that they made because I think last year special teams hurt them, especially against New England. And the reason they had to get rid of Forbath, who had 10 straight, is because they got to get this thing down from uh, 90 to 80. And so he was just a casualty of that. Yeah, he was a casualty of that. But also, don't underestimate the trust between Fossil and Greg Zerline. Greg Zerline is an outstanding kicker. And for an offense that should be one of the more explosive, he gives them another scoring threat. He has converted 60% of his kicks over 50 yards. So now if they just get to the 35-yard line, that should be points. A great move for the Dallas Cowboys. Yes. I couldn't agree with you more, but man, I mean, Zerline is one of my favorite kickers in the league. I mean, this guy has a boot. He can kick it from anywhere on the field. And if, for this offense, as high-powered as these guys are going to be, for them simply to get across the 50-yard line is going to be a threat to any team. And Zerline and this new uh, new special teams coordinator obviously gives them that, that opportunity to score points at any point in time in the game. You know, there's a reason they call him Greg uh, the Leg. And uh, Bucky, with your experience covering around the league, what, uh, obviously John Fossil has a, a tremendous reputation as a special teams coach. What do you think he brings? Oh, I think, I think he brings a lot. I think the one thing you'll see is they'll be very disciplined and detailed in the kicking game, but they also will use trick plays to try and steal possessions. Look for them to be a more aggressive with their kicking unit this year. All right, we're just getting started on this edition of Cowboys Special Edition brought to you by AT&T. When we come back, how about we talk running game? How about we talk about Ezekiel Elliott when we come back? Special Edition presented by AT&T is brought to you by Ford. Visit your local Ford dealer. Ford is the best in Texas. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Salvation Army, doing the most good. And by AT&T. This segment is brought to you by the Texas Lottery. Play the new sevens scratch tickets from the Texas Lottery. With top prizes up to $977,000, there's a sevens scratch ticket for everyone. So, play today. Welcome back to Special Edition, brought to you by 
AT&T. AutoNation brings you your player profile this week, and Danny Surak comes along this week with a breakdown of Ezekiel Elliott and exactly what the running game means to this Cowboys team. In football, there's a dialogue on the importance of the run game and how much you should invest in a workhorse from the backfield. If you take a look at the Dallas Cowboys over the last four seasons with Ezekiel Elliott, there's not a chance you can argue against him or his value. Elliott has plenty of accolades that are impressive to any running back. He's a three-time Pro Bowler, two-time league-leading rusher. He's got 26 games with 100-plus rushing yards, of which the Cowboys won 22. However, what makes Zeke stand out is his consistency to execute year after year, which is not an easy feat for the beating running backs take every game. Elliott is the only player in the last four years to finish as a top 10 rusher, including when he missed six games in 2017 and after missing all of training camp in 2019. Despite these obstacles, Zeke still found a way to be unstoppable. And they hand it to Elliott, breaks through on the left side to the goal line. He powers in. Touchdown, Elliott. Zeke knows how to turn on his engines and in 2019 gained a first down on 25% of his carries, proving his reliability to move the chains. You want to talk about explosiveness? The NFL considers a run more than 10 yards as a big play. And how big has Zeke been since joining the league? He's got 148 big play carries in his career, the most among any running back from 2016 through 2019, and it's not even close. Elliott has the traits that warrant his recent contract extension through 2026 with the Cowboys. He can block, he can catch, and he's made it well known that he can score too. And they're going to give it to Elliott coming left. There's a big hole from Leary and Smith. And Elliott walks the dog and jumps into the Salvation Army red kettle. While you can argue about the importance of the run game or how long you can rely on the running back to be your workhorse, what you can't argue is that Ezekiel Elliott and his consistency as a top performer is supreme and the Cowboys should keep feeding Zeke. Reporting for Special Edition, I'm Danny Sarek. It's been evident during Ezekiel Elliott's time in the league just how much he means to this Cowboys team. What's interesting this year now is with Mike McCarthy as the head coach. Let's go around the horn. Let's talk Zeke a little bit. And uh, let's start with you, Isaiah. What do you, what do you think about Zeke in uh, a Mike McCarthy office? Of course, Kellen Moore's still the offensive coordinator. No, I absolutely love it. I'm looking forward to it. We all know McCarthy likes to have a nice little stable of running backs. He depends on that ground game. And with freaky Zeke back there, like I referred to him, he is Mr. Consistent. Consistent. He's always going to fall forward. He's always going to give you that consistent uh, back that you can rely on. And in this particular office, with these weapons that they've surrounded around him, I think this is going to be an absolute threat all year long, as, it, as he has been in the past. Yeah, you talk about Zeke. I think Zeke is the straw that stirs the drink. Uh, he's the guy that dictates the way that defenses will play. When they go 11 personnel, one back, three wide receivers, one tight end, with the weapons that they have on the outside, they put defensive coordinators in a jam. And just remember this, Mike McCarthy learned under Marty Schottenheimer. He loves the running game, and when Dallas has been able to run the football, that's when they've won division titles. Look for them to play a little keep away by beating Zeke. And, and remember, uh, Mike McCarthy loves to run, have a, have a nice screen game back at Green Bay. His screen game is coming back, and I think Zeke will excel at the screen game. Yeah, uh, Bucky, what, what do you see Zeke uh, in, the, in, in the passing game? Uh, we've seen it uh, at times in, in his career. Uh, he is effective as a receiver coming out of the backfield as well. Yeah, he, look, he, he hasn't fully been utilized as a pass catcher, but when you look at him, he's a guy who has soft hands. He has excellent patience in the screen game that Nate talked about. I think if he can get his receptions up to that 60 to 75 mark, that's when you're seeing them utilize Zeke to his, his maximum potential. Kind of Nate kind of reminds me of the days of him that when he was getting 60 catches a year back in the 90s. And I think the Cowboys might have been going to some Super Bowls back then. They didn't win in some Super Bowls back then. Yeah, right. yeah but then we, <laughs> I know, Nate, you would like to talk on and on oh, about yes, all sir. those Super Bowl wins <laughs> in the 90s. <laughs> All right, when we come back here on Special Edition, Cowboys had a pretty good tight end back then. They've lost a pretty good tight end in the offseason. So what about the tight ends on this roster when we come back? This segment was brought to you by the Texas Lottery. Play the new sevens scratch tickets from the Texas Lottery. With top prizes up to $977,000, there's a sevens scratch ticket for everyone. So play today.
This segment is brought to you by Ford. Visit your local Ford dealer. Ford is the best in Texas. Cowboy Special Edition brought to you by AT&T continues now. Let's take a look at this uh, Cowboys tight end position for the first time. Well, it's the second time, actually, since 2003. They don't have Jason Witten on the roster. Of course, didn't have him on the roster a couple of years ago when he was in the Monday night football booth. But now he's a Las Vegas Raider. Let's talk Blake Jarwin a little bit. What does this do for Blake Jarwin as he is the number one tight end on this team? And uh, how about Isaiah? We'll uh, kick it off with you and go around the horn. I think, obviously, he has a great opportunity. Wits out the picture. He is the man on the line. You know, there's no question about it. They gave him the money, so now there's everything that comes with that is expectations. So I'm looking forward, personally, to seeing him and how he interacts with the offensive line, how he's able to communicate with them, how he's able to block, how he's able to get off the ball and make those calls. So that's what I'm looking forward to. We're going to see if he steps up to the plate. Yeah, look, he, he should have tremendous opportunities, not just because he's now the number one tight end, but we talk about the weapons around him. The three wide receivers are going to command a lot of attention. Zeke Elliott in the backfield is going to command a lot of attention. He is the only guy that's going to be guaranteed of getting one-on-one -on -one coverage. If he takes advantage of that, he could be a very key playmaker for this offense. I think he's a miss, a mat, a miss, a miss. Ooh. Mismatch. <laughs> a mismatch <laughs> nightmare. I'm sorry. I think he's a mismatch nightmare. I think he's going to average over, around about 12, 13 yards per catch, and I thank you, Bill, for that. <laughs> you bet. <laughs> you know, and, and the other thing the Cowboys did in the offseason, of course, it will, it'll be interesting to see how much 12 personnel the Cowboys use in this Mike McCarthy offense, but Blake Bell was the number two tight end to Travis Kelsey on the Super Bowl champion Kansas City Chiefs last year. And don't forget about Dalton Schultz, a former fourth-round uh, draft pick as well. Uh, Bucky, as, as you cover around the league, uh, uh, and especially with Mike McCarthy and the 12 personnel on offense, uh, what, do you, what do you anticipate? How many two tight end sets do you anticipate? You know, in the past in Green Bay, he's been very, very creative with the way that he deployed his personnel groupings. And so 12 personnel could be a factor, even though we talk about C.D. Lamb and how they could go three wide receivers. He will take advantage of that. In Green Bay, he always utilized two tight ends to spread them out in empty sets to make it very easy for the quarterback. I think we'll see some of those things mixed in to have Dak Prescott take advantage of defenses. All right, and we continue here on Cowboys Special Edition, brought to you by AT&T. We hear from Stephen Jones. That's next. This segment was brought to you by Ford. Visit your local Ford dealer. Ford is the best in Texas. This segment is brought to you by AT&T. Welcome back to Special Edition, brought to you by AT&T. Nationwide brings us the Stephen Jones interview this week, standing by with Nick Eatman. Give me some, give me a spot on your team. I know that you'll probably say all of them, but give me a position that you're really excited about. You think that this position is, is one that, that could really carry uh, this team, offense, defense, just, 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 some, just a position that you feel like you've really kind of shored up. Well, it's a tough one uh, because we feel so good about this football team in general. And uh, uh, but I must say with uh, uh, jumping on C.D. Lamb there in the first round that this receiving core is, is going to be something else. And uh, I know Dak Stone with them in the offseason uh, with C.D., with uh, Michael Gallup, with Cooper uh, and the rest of the crew. But uh, uh, I think this is a very unique receiving core. I don't think we've seen anything like it. I don't think our fans have seen anything like it in terms of uh, the depth that we have and the weapons uh, that these three guys uh, represent. And, and you couple that with, a, with the offensive line and a running game and a receiving tight end uh, that we have in Jarwin. Uh, I know uh, Coach uh, McCarthy's excited, uh, him and Kellen, uh, to get a chance to work with these guys and certainly uh, try to put together uh, a dynamic offense. And then on the flip side, is there a position that you're, I wouldn't say worried about, but just want, want to, you know, just kind of excited to see how it's all going to, going to play out maybe in the secondary you did, you did lose some players there or maybe another position on defense. You know, overall we feel really good, Nick, but uh, obviously, uh, you know, changing, uh, you know, our defensive coordinator up, uh, you know, we've had Rod there for so many years. But uh, to see how these uh, uh, guys, uh, you know, Coach Nolan step in and, and work with our defensive front seven. And then, as you said, 
where all these guys are going to land uh, on the back end of our defense. But we feel like uh, we've certainly got a lot of uh, uh, talent there that uh, can step up and really make a big difference. And uh, we feel like that we are uh, are going to have an aggressive defense that can get the ball. We all know that's what it's all about is takeaways. If you win that battle, you usually win the football game. And we certainly want to get better uh, uh, from that standpoint. A lot of changes all over the building. One of the big changes on the field, that defensive tackle spot. I mean, we, like you said, Rod Marinelli had a different type of guy in the middle. These guys with McCoy and Poe, uh, you'll put Antoine in. Antoine looks small in, in, in this group. So uh, that, that's an exciting part, I think, just to see that how that defensive tackle uh, position is going to shake out. Well, as I mentioned to start the show, I think we had a great uh, free agency, too. And uh, Will did a great job with uh, Coach McCarthy and the new staff of identifying some guys who could make a difference. And for us to get players like McCoy and Poe in here, you know, to really uh, shore up that defensive front was huge for us. So uh, I agree with you. That's going to be exciting to see what these guys bring uh, to the table and then certainly are going to uh, do a lot for for D-Law and that crew out there. Certainly, uh, an Alden Smith's done a lot to change his life, and it's going to be real interesting uh, because when he walks in the building, he looks like uh, a defensive end. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how he how he responds after not being in the game for a couple of years. Yeah, there's no doubt. We're excited to see what, what Alden Smith's going to do. Excited to see about Leighton Van Der Esch coming back with Jalen Smith, Cheeto, uh, you know, corner safety, perhaps maybe he might be moving around. You got a lot of corners over there. You got to figure out that that position, but as they've always said, all coaches say, you can't have too many good cornerbacks. So that will well, be a fun problem. problem. A couple of them. And, uh, these guys are talented and, uh, we're looking forward to, uh, uh, see what, uh, see what we can do back there. Our thanks to Stephen and Nick and up next here on Cowboys Special Edition, Amari Cooper. Could the Cowboys have three 1,000-yard receivers this year? This segment was brought to you by AT&T. Special Edition, presented by AT&T, was brought to you by Ford. Visit your local Ford dealer. Ford is the best in Texas. Miller Lite, the only beer of the Dallas Cowboys. AT&T. And by NFL Game Pass. You'll never miss a game again. Enjoy full access to coaches film and game replays from week one to the Super Bowl. Subscribe at DallasCowboys.com slash Game Pass. Yeah, I think it was a a great pickup. Um, you know, you have to draft the best player on the board. Um, everybody understands that, and I think he's a, a, a great receiver. And I think, um, you know, with me and Michael Gallup going for a thousand yards uh, last season, I think the expectation was to have three thousand yards receiver, three thousand yard receiver this year. Amari Cooper, yes, he's got a nice big contract, and uh, he's got some help at the receiving core. Are there enough footballs to go around for this re wide receiver trio of Cooper, Michael Gallup, and the first-round pick, C.D. Lamb? Isaiah, what do you think? Uh, what are the chances of three 1,000-yard receivers? I'm just going to put it like this. A, you don't want three 1,000-yard receivers because that means that you're coming from behind and you're probably losing some games. And B, <laughs> you got a guy in the backfield named Ezekiel Elliott. I don't think he wants three 1,000-yard receivers. You know, here's the thing. I, I actually like what Amari Cooper is putting out there because the Dallas Cowboys have an opportunity to really dictate the terms. And if you want to stop Zeke Elliott, that means everyone on the outside is going to get one-on-one -on -one coverage. They are talented enough to do it. It's only been done five times in the National Football League, but they could be the sixth. You know, if Amari come out and be a little bit more consistent across the board, home and away, I think that could truly happen. Well, it will be interesting to see, and I, I think it's great uh, hearing the comments of, Mar of Amari Cooper. He is taking the youngster, C.D. Lamb, under his wing, the first-round draft pick out of Oklahoma. It's going to be great to see the Cowboys on the field whenever we're able to do that as training camp kicks off on Thursday at the Star in Frisco, and we'll bring you all the action that we can show you next week here on Special Edition.